a dream I know Deep up my feelings for you Hello reality viewers, welcome back again to Reality Latest Gist, the home of news and politics. For this channel, we they drop news every day and we they react to every video when it comes our way. And our reality news now we they drop for this channel and we they also they talk on as it be. If today not the first time we say they come across this channel, you are highly welcome. Thank you so much for stopping by. And if you are returning subscribers, I appreciate all of you now for our massive support to this channel i say may god bless all of you now in jesus name amen i get video away i want to present to una this very moment and i'm going to follow now they watch the video after we don't watch them together make we drop our opinion constructively for the comment section like our videos and also share our videos if possible bye for now case of guinea for example a family being in power for 57 years are you the only family in guinea are there no other Guineans? What gives you the right to think that the sun rises and sets in your household alone? It is this kind of seat tightest approaches to governance, aided by misgovernance, corruption, opaque governance directionless, hunger, thirst, melancholy, and social disequilibrium that make people to rise up and take up arms against their leaderships. Such taking up of arms to me against oppressors who masquerade under the thin guise of leaders, changing their constitutions at will to accommodate further terms. I do not regard it as a coup d'etat. I regard it as good riddance to bad rubbish. And that is why I have written tons and tons of articles. My last outing on this was 40 pages. By the way, my keynote address today is 78 pages, but I'm just speaking to it. And I've sent it already to the Secretariat. My last outing on this was 40 pages, where I warned the Nigerian government not to lead or aid a cause to go to Niger Republic to attempt to forcibly remove the interim military government with Niger Republic having self borders with seven states in Nigeria. The humanitarian catastrophe displaced and dislocated people that you are going to cause will be unimaginable added to our present insecurity, Boko Haram, and banditry, kidnapping, hunger, thirst, disillusionment. Let me use this forum to, to, to warn the Nigerian government. Don't take it. It is neither righteous nor justified to intervene. Not only because Niger Republic is a sovereign state, but also because we have no right to intervene and tell them how to govern themselves. Nigeria has never been told how to govern herself. From the first military push, of 15 January 1966, led by Major Kaduna Uzo Guchukuma and other young majors. How did you see the international community come here to tell us how to govern ourselves? The counter coup, or rather, the counter coup that, that removed General JTU Agui Ronsi 
who ruled for six months, led by Mutala Mohammed, Danjuma, and others, and the enthronement of a 32 year old bachelor, later General Yakubu Gowon, to be head of state, who ruled for eight good years between 1967 and January 15, 1970, the Armed Forces Day. When General Philip F. Young surrendered to General Olusegun Obasanjo, I didn't see the international community evade us or interfere in our foreign affairs. When Mutala Mohammed was killed, ambushed, and killed in Nikoyi in 1976, and Olusegun Obasanjo was made head of state with Iaradwa as his deputy. I didn't see the international community come to tell us how to govern ourselves. When Obasajo handed over power in 1979 to Alhaji, Aliyu, Shehu, Usman, Shegari, with Dr. Alex Ekweme and Igbo as his vice, I didn't see the international community come to lecture us how to govern ourselves. When that democratic government was forcibly overthrown by Major General Muhammadu Buhari on the 31st of December, 1983, I didn't see AU or UNO or the International Human Rights Commission come to dictate to us how to manage our affairs. When gap tooted General Ibrahim Badamosu Babangida, the man who described himself as the evil genius, removed Buhari from office on the 28th of August, 1985, I didn't see any international community intervention when Babangida was forced by all of us in the civil society to abdicate power and step aside after counseling the most populist, the most transparent, the most credible elections ever held in Nigeria, not the first and shambolic elections we have been having in the recent past, I did not see any international community come to tell us how to govern ourselves. When late Abacha removed the interim national nonsense, who they called inter interim national government, or business mogul, and former chairman of USC, Chief Ernest Shonekon, in 1993, there were no international participants. And when the diminutive General Sani Abacha, but a very intelligent man, who institutionalized Nigeria's six geopolitical zones, where were the international community? And after both Abiola, the man who won that mandate, and Abacha died in mysterious circumstances in Nassau Villa, where were the international community participants? And when General Abdul Salami Abubakar, the chairman of today's occasion in absentia, took over power and within 11 months, handed over to the democratically elected government of Obasanjo, I did not see any international community participate. So there is no reason whatsoever. And we have no moral high grounds or authority to go and intervene in other countries' internal affairs, sovereign countries, with their sovereignty and suzerainty, sir, 
Your Excellency, Secretary General, help me convey my very strong message to African leaders to give governance, good governance to the people and where they are not ready for the gains, they should be ready for the pains. So international humanitarian law therefore seeks to achieve limitation of the effect of armed conflicts to protect people who are not in armed conflicts or who are no longer participants. Maybe they have decided to quit. It also limits the methods of welfare. It is a pr practical set of rules designed for the battlefield, rooted in ancient civilizations and even religions. Armed conflicts have received so much patronage in Africa. And Africa has been a major contributor to resolving armed conflicts across the world whether from the First World War or the Second World War, the war in Burma, and others. But have these long years under colonial tutelage contributed anything to Africa in return? Are we not still regarded from the white man's perspective as people of the early caves, Australopithecus, early cavemen, people they think are savages, jumping from one tree branch to another, when civilization actually started from Africa here. Secretary General, help me let them know that civilization started in Africa. You may need to pick up the book, Walter Rodney's How Europe Underdeveloped Africa. You may need to read about slavery and slave trade that dehumanized humanity for over 500 years. Man's inhumanity to man, degradation, servitude. The great roles of unforgettable historical prodigies, Thomas Clarkson, William Wibaspos, our own Olaido Equiano, to abolish this slavery. And how Abraham Lincoln picked up the gauntlet and made the proclamation for the abolition of slave trade, which led to his prompt execution in 1865 during the wars between the Southern Confederates and the, the American Union. Has Africa progressed? I do not know. Or do you? That should be one of the issues you must interrogate. From Angola to Burundi, Cameroon, Rwanda, the Rwanda genocide, the Hutus and Tutsis. I was there with my wife two years ago, and the young lady who took us on a sightseeing across the state, I asked her, where are you from? Are you Hutu or Tutsi? She said, no, sir. I can't answer that question. I said, why? He said, because I'm a Rwandese, I'm from Rwanda. I said, I know. Originally, were you from Hutu or Tutsi? He said, I'm sorry. All Rwanda people are regarded as one.
This was in Kingali, where I had a bet with a friend of mine before traveling out with my wife. My friend told me, if I saw a piece of paper anywhere on the streets of Kigali, that he would pay me one million naira. I told my wife, I thought I was a poor man. I'm going to be rich. Because I will see not only pieces of papers, I will see dumps of refuge. For the 10 days, about 10 days or so that we were in Kigali, Rwanda, trust me, speaking straight from the heart, I never saw a piece of paper on the streets. These people even wash the trees that line the streets for beauty. A small country in Africa, once ravaged by internal, internal sin war. <sighs> Can we say this of Nigeria, the giant of Africa, with over 225 million people, by latest United Nations projections? I do not know, or do you? for all of us. From Central African Republic to Chad, Côte d'Ivoire to Djibouti, Democratic Republic of the Congo, DRC, to Egypt, Eritrea to Ethiopia, Liberia to Libya, Mali, Mali to the Congo, Gabon to Nigeria, Niger, to Syria, Leon, Somalia, to South Sudan, Sudan itself, Burkina Faso, Mali, Uganda. The death toll alone in all these conflicts is overwhelming. During the Second Congo War, not less than 5.4 million people died. During the bloody three-year Nigerian Civil War, not less than 3 million Biafrans were killed. There is a great writer, Mr. Greenwood. He told us that the theory that humanit I mean, humanitarian law is essentially Eurocentric is in reality more than a criticism of most literature on the subject than the reflection of historical fact. It says it's a reality when we say it is Eurocentric. This is because of the ravages of colonialism and even now of neo-colonialism. We all remember the partition the Berlin Partition of Africa. They came. They would just say, Portugal, which side you like? I bet take that side. France, you like that side? Take. English people, do you want Nigeria and others? Oh yeah. The great I don't know how to put it. That was how Africa was divided and shared. So they have tried again and again to still believe that we are terra nullius. Either no man's land or savages. Help me tell them we are not. Help me tell them that Africa, even if you look at the world map, is at the center, is the heartbeat of the world. We must now shun that narrative which made Mongo Park, which made historians to write that Mongo Park 
discovered the river Niger at Kanji, New Busa. How do you discover a river where you met inhabitants drinking the water, taking their bath with the water? And you tell us that you discovered it? That is his historical profanity. So if he did right, when I still live on a comment below. If he did bad, when I still live on a comment below. When I remember, say everybody gets freedom of speech. Okay? All right. Thank you very much. To So if you did watch me, you never subscribe, my brother, sister. I beg you in the name of God. Make you hit that red button and turn on the notification bell. So each time I upload any video, you will get, you will get notification and you will constantly watch me. Thank you very much. See you again in my other video. I love you all. Bye-bye.